Hey guys, welcome to this video series where we are going to be discussing budget deficits and fiscal policy. Um, this is going to be an introductory video where we're going to go through the mechanics of government spending. Let's go. So in this video series, we will be discussing the mechanics of government debt and tax patterns as discussed in David Romer's Advanced Macroeconomics textbook. Thinking about government budgets are important because we want to develop a clear picture of what governments can or cannot do fiscally and how exactly government spending is financed reasonably. Most of the frameworks we will be going through, other than models of strategic debt accumulation, will be very mechanical in nature. So we're not gonna talk about preference structures here. We're gonna be thinking about exclusively in the world of budgets. However, we'll derive some remarkable results that will illustrate some key ideas for thinking about government spending. So how do we think about fiscal policy? So in order to understand the nature of fiscal policy, we need to define uh, what governments can or cannot do. The way we define what governments can or cannot do is through the use of the budget constraint, where G, T, is the government spending at time T, D naught is the initial real debt, outstanding where D zero here is uh, the debt rather than wealth. So it enters in uh, negatively. Um, T capital T T is the tax revenues at time T and this RT terms is this uh, sum of all uh, real interest rates. So um, the way we can go and we can think about this is this constant uh, compounding uh, sort of interest process that we have. Um, Governments are credible institutions in terms of paying back their, their debts. So we require a no Ponzi game condition as well, which is this thing down at the bottom. So let's talk about how debt evolves and how institutions stay legitimate. We're going to define our law of motion for debt defined as following, where we have GT minus TT plus RTDT where this first term in the brackets is referred to our primary deficit. And this RTDT is the interest accrued from the previous period's debt. With this definition in mind, and through rearrangement of our government's budget constraint, we obtain the following result. We need to note here that this communicates a very important results that governments must run a large enough surplus to offset the initial debt. The reason why we don't think about interest here, reason meaning that we don't have uh, this interest accrued on debt, is because we're thinking of this in terms of lifetime discounted uh, revenues. So we're only thinking exclusively uh, in real terms here. So we derived a clean way of thinking about uh, government budget deficits uh, through the government's budget constraint because there it involves a present value of expenditure tax and tax flows but not a deficit at any point in time, meaning that we're not carrying it around with us just by the nature of this present value discounting. Conventional measures can thus be confusing without consideration for the price level PT and noting that the nominal interest rate I here, um, we have the following law of motion. So we have a PT here on our really right hand side of the plus sign after our equal sign here. And we have a PT also on our left-hand side as well. And we also have I here, which is going to be our nominal interest rate, which is composed of a real term and an inflationary term denoted by RT and pi T respectively. With a little bit more of more algebra, we can go and we can pull through the price uh, term right over here at this equation. And we can go and deflate it, right? So we end up with this equation here. But we still run into a problem that we're not really getting a, a clear uh, estimate of what our budget deficit actually is um, at any point in time, or really what the primary deficit is in relation to uh, how you say this uh, secondary deficit, because there's some inflated portion of the budget deficit that we're going and thinking about. So th this is kind of uh, ending the video um, on 
a little bit more of a question mark because on one hand, uh, we have this tool for going and defining our government budget constraint, but in terms of you know practical measurement here, uh, in terms of interest rates and price levels, we can't just go and work with a deflated term here because we have our nominal interest rate here. So uh, this is the first video on uh, budget deficits and fiscal policy. In the next video, we are going to be talking about Ricardian equivalents. See you then.